Bible church. The Bible says to preach the gospel to every creature. And Miss Rebecca and Miss Rachel Patterson usually sing as the deer. And I look out the window this morning, I go, that's an awful big dog. And uh, it wasn't a dog, it was a deer. And it looked like a mommy deer and two baby deer right here in the front yards of the homes. And uh, how awesome is that? So let's look to the Lord in prayer. We got a lot to pray for um, this morning. Uh, continue to pray for my stepdad, Henry. And we also want to keep the families of those that were involved in the accident on, in, uh, on this past Monday. Um, keep them in prayer. Um, Trip Johnson's family, pray for his uh, classmates. I know JD's been in every one of his classes since pre-K. And uh, pray for Mr. Klein. Pray for the, the truck driver, because uh, that's something that he'll have to live with for the rest of his life. And those that are um, Tripp's mom, who is still in shock trauma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, just a lot to pray for this morning. Lord, we do thank you for the freedom, privilege, and opportunity that we have to worship you this morning. God, maybe for those that are still traveling in, pray that you would give them safety. And I pray that you would uh, just be with these families that we've mentioned. And uh, Lord, we also think of Miss Angel and her family. We also think of um, Joe's uh, sister, uh, Diane, and his brother, Ed, who are both struggling with um, physical illnesses. God, that you would just be with them, be with the staff who are working with them. God, just be with us this morning, that you would speak to our hearts, that you would strengthen us in our spiritual lives. And Lord, we thank you for it all in Jesus' name. Amen. And we have some young men, I believe, that want to do some singing. You want to come sing? Oh, 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 I can sing a deer song. What song do you want to sing? You want to sing as the, we can sing as the deer. He doesn't know it. No, you do. And it is the heaven to walk with the seekers.
seated. And again, <laughs> welcome. Can you make sure the phone's still good? It's fine. Mr. Fingers Magoo there. And um, welcome for those that are joining us live in person. And Brother Ken is sitting in the light this morning. Amen. With the time change, he gets to be blinded by the sun. Not just my radiant, not just my radiant glow. Amen. And uh, this morning, let's go ahead and sing. Here's a good one. It was written in 1878 uh, by Elisha Hoffman. Are you washed in the blood? Thursday night 
at 7 o'clock. We've got people from uh, all over the state of Maryland that come in and join us. Right now, we're studying the names of God in the Old Testament. It's absolutely free, and it's just a wonderful work. Uh, we're on for just about an hour, and uh, we are already starting to see God answer some of the prayer requests that we have going on there on Thursday nights as well. And um, here is a, another song that we can go ahead and sing. Jesus, keep me near the cross. Words by Fanny Crosby, 1869. Jesus, keep me near the cross. There are precious Job number one closer to home for her 
And number two, a job that would allow her to uh, join us again in church. Uh, but I do know she's faithful in watching uh, even when she is not with us. So we love you. We pray for you. We miss you. And uh, Sean's not here. And I know last week <clears throat> at this time, his, his family, he had just dropped them off at the airport. And they were heading out west. And I'm not quite sure if um, maybe he's picking them up from the airport today. Uh, but Sean, we love you. We miss you as well. And uh, we're praying for you. And before we get into uh, scripture this morning, let's go ahead and pray. Allow this song to minister to our hearts. Lord, we do thank you again uh, for your word. And thank you for ministering to our hearts. And God, I have to thank you so much for so many talented people from all across the nation, all across the world, uh, that we can freely use to minister to us here uh, through the internet. And I just pray, Lord, that you would use this song uh, to prepare our hearts and our minds uh, for your words this morning. And uh, just give me clarity of thought, clarity of speech. Everything that will be said and done will be solely for your honor and your glory. And I pray, Lord, that you would speak to hearts, save souls, and change lives this morning. In Jesus' precious name, amen. In the same 
Good job, choir. I appreciate that this morning. All the hard work and preparation that went into that. Amen. And uh, this morning we're going to be focusing on 1 John chapter 5, verses 5 through 13. And the title of the message this morning is going to be The Surety of Salvation. The Surety of Salvation. The Bible says in verse number 5, who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but water, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in earth, uh, in earth, the spirit and the water and the blood, and these three agree in one. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he hath testified of his Son. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself, he that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Amen. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that you can assume that you have eternal life. Come on now. Correct the preacher if he's wrong. Right? Preacher's not always right. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may what? Know that you have eternal life and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. You can talk to so many people and ask them, if you were to die right now, where would you go? To heaven. To heaven. A lot of people would say, well, I don't know. Can we really know that? Some people may say, only God knows. A lot of people say, you know, uh, well, I'll find out when I get there. There's so many different answers uh, that you will receive. But hopefully the one that you would answer this morning is that I know that I am on my
my way to heaven. And uh, we're going to be looking at this morning the surety of salvation. You know, the strongest, uh, the strongest bond is a three uh, chord unity, right? The strongest rope has uh, three units to it. The Godhead has uh, uh, three uh, distinct uh, personalities. You've got God the Father, you've got God the Son, you've got God the Holy Spirit. And to keep a marriage strong, it needs to be a three-fold cord. It needs to be the wife, the husband, and God. Yes? No? Maybe so? No, it needs to be God, the husband, and the wife. The word in verse 13 to know, it occurs 27 times. In God bless you, 22 different verses just in five chapters in verse John. If you can be saved and not know it, then you can lose it and not miss it. Does that make sense to you this morning? If you can be saved and not know it, then you can lose it and not miss it. The Bible teaches us that once you're saved, you are sealed by the Holy Ghost. You are indwelt by the Holy Ghost. Once you become a child of God, once you are adopted into the family of God, that is an eternal process uh, that is kept by the power of God. Remember, John chapter 10, verses 27 through 29, teaches us that we are his sheep. Did I say that right, John 10, 27 through uh, 29 or 31, I believe. Uh, that we are his sheep, we know his voice, and we are kept by the hand of the Father, or the hand of Jesus, who is there in the hand of God the Father. This morning, we're going to see the triune Godhead in the work of the surety of our salvation. The first thing that we come to this morning in verse uh, number six is the surety of the atoning work of Jesus Christ. The atoning work of Christ. Look again at verse number six. This is he that came by water and blood. Even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and the blood. I was surprised uh, yesterday as uh, my dear friend gave me a call and said he was going to come over and visit with us. I haven't seen him since July. And uh, what a wonderful time we had with our dear friend last night. And he and I, we were kind of sitting down and we were just chit-chatting about uh, some different things. And one of the things we got to talking about is Jesus. We got to talking about how he, uh, how he was uh, God manifest in the flesh. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. The Word became flesh and dwelt upon us or dwelt among us. I'm sorry. And Jesus had to come by water and the blood. We're going to see here in John 19, 33 and 34. But when they came to Jesus at the crucifixion, uh, it was um, it was custom for them to speed up the crucifixion process by breaking the legs of the crucified to suffocate them. And again, speed up the crucifixion process. Uh, but they did not do so with our sacrifice, with our Savior. Uh, number one, that is the uh, that, that is prophecy. The Bible says that not one bone would be broken. All right, so they didn't have to break the bones of Jesus. They saw uh, that what they can see with their eyes, they assumed that he was dead already. But then the Bible says, uh, so they didn't break his legs. What did they do? He took a spear. One of the soldiers took a spear and pierced his side and forthwith came there out blood 
and water. Let's look at that this morning. The atoning work of Christ, the meaning of the water and the blood. We're going to learn more about this here in a few weeks. Uh, but those who were flogged would often go into hypervolemic shock, a term that refers to a low blood volume. In other words, the person would have lost so much blood, he would go into shock. The results would be threefold. Number one, the heart would race to pump blood that was not there. Number two, well actually it's fourfold, I'm sorry. Number two, the victim would collapse or faint due to low blood pressure. Number three, the kidneys would shut down to reserve bodily fluids. And number four, the person would experience extreme thirst as the body desired to replenish lost fluids. Prior to death, the sustained rapid heartbeat caused by Hypovolemic shock also causes fluid to gather in the sac that is around the heart and the lungs. This gathering of fluid in the membrane around the heart is called pericardial effusion, and the fluid gathering around the lungs is called pleural effusion. Okay? So that is more than likely what happened. Jesus died of a broken heart. Jesus died of a broken heart. The meaning of the water and the blood. Uh, he had to come. He had to be in the flesh. He came by water. Uh, what are babies in before they're born? They're in a sack of water. All the things in the Old Testament point to the coming of the Messiah. Even the tabernacle, whenever you would enter in, you would have the sacrifice there. And then you would have the labor that was there to be able to well, wash yourselves. So the sacrifice was given and then the priest would have to wash themselves. You had to have the blood and the water. So that was the meaning of the water and the blood. Now let's look at the message of the water and the blood. The Bible teaches us that there is a penalty for sin. The wages of sin is death. The payment for us being a sinner. Why was Jesus born as a virgin birth? Because we, as mankind, get our sin nature through the blood. We get the blood through our fathers. Our sin nature is passed down through our daddies. So unfortunately, as much as I want to say, quit acting like your mama, unfortunately, they act more like daddy than mama. Yes, I did say that. Amen. I'm earning good brownie points this morning. And, uh, but there is a price on sin. With the message of the water and the blood, the blood of Jesus removes the penalty of our sin. Hebrews 9, 22 teaches us all, almost all things are uh, by the law purged with blood and without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. And remember, I made this statement that whenever I was ordained uh, back in 2003, I believe, uh, I was asked this question, what is more important, the shedding of the blood or the death of Jesus? And I gave a one-fold answer, a one-word answer, yes. They're both important. It wasn't just the death of Jesus. They could have put him in uh, some other kind of torture device. They could have uh, uh, hanged him by a noose. They could have drowned in him. They could have done so many different things but without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. He is the propitiation for our sin. The word propitiation means the substitute sacrifice that would appease or satisfy the demands of a holy God. The sin of our fathers that you and I are born with separates us from a holy God. God. There had to be the shedding of blood in order for us to have 
remission of sins. Look at verse 12 in Hebrews 9. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered once into the holy place, having attained eternal redemption for us. Listen, my friend, we can have a surety of our salvation because he said on the cross three simple words. It is finished. Jesus completed what he came to do. I like that song. Rock of ages cleft for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Let the water and the blood from thy wounded side which flowed be of sin the double cure. Save from wrath and make me pure. So the first part of our Three cold, short, three corded surety of salvation is the atoning work of Christ. But number two, we see here the abiding witness of the Spirit. The abiding witness of the Spirit. We're going to read verses six through ten. Then we're going to break them down for you this morning. Uh, let's look at them again here. And it is the Spirit which beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood, and these three agree in one. And again, just like every single message that we preach, this doesn't even scratch the surface of the theology and all of the doctrine and all of the, all of the information that God wants us to give. This is just a... Uh, just a sample tasting of what God wants us to give. I highly encourage you to go home, study more of this out for yourself. If we receive the witness of men, you believe me this morning, correct? Right? We do receive the witness of men. I'm going to prove that to you here in just a moment. So we receive the witness of men. The witness of God is greater. So many people say to me, well, I just don't have your knowledge. Okay? Now, listen, I, <clears throat> I, I earned a bachelor's degree. I earned my bachelor's degree, uh, my four-year bachelor's degree in three years. And I went on to earn a master's and a doctorate in theology. And um, Brother Bruce Miller, I know you watch these uh, sermons from time to time and I sincerely love you and I appreciate you brother Jeff Cook one of our teachers is uh, uh, planning on being with us in August no disrespect to these wonderful men of God but most of the things that I know did not come from what I learned in school most of what I know comes from my time that I spend studying the word of God, being obedient to my Savior. I said it before, and I'll say it again over and over and over again. The Bible does not command us to read it, but the Bible commands us to what? It. Study it. To do it. Right? How do you know how to do it? You get your word. You get his word in your heart that you might not sin against him. So if you believe the preaching of man, the witness of man, the witness of God is even greater than that. For this is the witness of God, which you have testified of his son. He that believeth on the son of God hath the witness in himself. I want you to see here this morning that the Holy Spirit witnesses to you. Again, we're all born with a sin nature. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, so death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. This morning, I believe with all my heart, if if you're listening to this, uh, uh, if you're listening to this sermon, uh, whether here live or you're watching it on uh, social media uh, in real time or you're watching it later in history, I believe with all my heart, if you have not trusted Jesus Christ as your salvation, then right now the, <clears throat> the Spirit of God is witnessing to you. He is witnessing to you. 
Let's look at verse number 6 again. This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. What did Jesus say about the Holy Spirit? Well, Jesus teaches us that uh, he told us that his spirit is supposed to be will testify of him, not with testify of him. But look what Jesus said in John chapter 15, verse 26. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. So this morning, uh, the uh, Pentecostal movement, the, uh, the junior church movement, as I would call it, the nightclub scene, as I would call it, what they want to teach you is that everything points to the Holy Spirit. And, and, and that, that's not how it works, okay? The Holy Spirit uh, 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 points and will testify of Jesus the Son. God the Son. So it is the Son who saves us. We have the surety because of what Jesus has done, but we also have the Spirit which witnesses to us. You take the words of man as being true, then we, his, Jesus' assurance is his word is truth to us. That sentence doesn't really make sense. Uh, man, this voice to text thing, I even went back over this last night. But if we take the words of man as being truth, then we have the assurance of Jesus that his word is true. You take the witness of man, amen? I'm gonna prove it to everyone here this morning. How do you know this building is gonna hold us up? Yeah, well, it looks like it's going to hold us up, right? But it's been inspected, right? Someone came and put their approval on the work here that has been done. That gives us the assurity that, listen, we can come inside this building and it's not going to collapse. The ceiling's not going to fall in on us. It's going to keep us uh, uh, from the elements. It's, it's going to keep us dry when it rains. It's going to keep the school, hopefully, because of the air conditioning and uh, warm because of the heater and all that. But we have the word of man. We trust in man every single day. Listen, I've started a really bad addiction. And yes, I will tell you that I've started a horrible addiction. I'm ashamed of myself, Randy. I just can't live without Wendy's Thick and Frosties. Thick and frosties. Oh, they're yummy. You like them too. Right? I've started an addiction to them. But whenever we go and we uh, we go to one of these fast food restaurants, uh, we're trusting in man that he's not poisoning us. Right? My wife made the, uh, the refreshments for today. Or what did you make today? Uh, cinnamon something. Yeah, cinnamon something. Just come out and try it. It's good. Right? But if we trust man, we can multiply that trust and trust in Jesus because his word is true. He is the word. Verse number nine, if we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is what? Greater. For this is the witness of God, which he had testified of his son. So we see here the Holy Spirit witnesses to you and whenever you receive uh the salvation that god has made for us then the spirit witnesses in you you become a witness of his i'm glad this morning that the boys were able to come and sing and i chose this little light of mine because listen we are the light okay we are a reflection of the light of the Son of God. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And but then Jesus also said, ye are the light of the world. Okay? We're just like uh, um, 
pretty much anything in the entire universe. They have what is called an albedo, a reflection of light. All right? Uh, the mirror is not a source of its own light, but it takes light reflected from a flashlight or from a light bulb or from your bright, smiling faces and reflects it out to be seen. So the witness of the Holy Spirit uh, witnesses to you, but then the Holy Spirit witnesses in you. Look at verse number 10. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness where? In himself. In himself. How can you know that what I am saying is the truth? Because I have the witness that not only witnessed to me, but now witnesses in me. Once we believe his witness to us, then he begins to witness in us. I mean... I'm thinking of an example, you know, my wife says the cinnamon, something or another. Well, another thing that I like is cheesecake. It's some good preaching this morning, ain't it? Mm -hmm. Anytime it involves food, it's always good preaching. But I can say, listen, uh, you know, my wife and Randy and I, we're going to sit down at the table and I'm going to eat this cheesecake. Well, Randy can say, when, I don't... When? <laughs> Randy can say, when, 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 when. You're not being a good example this morning. I'm not going to use Brother Ken now. No. Uh, Brother Randy says, I don't believe in such a thing as cheesecake. There's no such thing. And then my wife turns around and says, I don't think this cheesecake would be very good tasting. Actually, it's usually me saying that to her because I want all of it. And I'll take the first bite. I'm a good husband. I always take the first bite of good food just to make sure it's healthy. It doesn't make her sick. And, um, you know, if, it, if, it, if I think it tastes bad or it may, may not be uh, uh, good for her or it may harm her, I'll eat the whole thing. I'll sacrifice my body for my wife. But maybe she'll say, you know, I just don't believe it's going to be a good tasting cheesecake. But listen to me. I can look at it for myself and say, I see that it exists. Then I can take a bite and I can say, well, there's a witness inside of me that it does exist and that it tastes good as well. That reminds me of Psalms 34, verse 8, <clears throat> where the Bible says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. So the Holy Spirit witnesses to us, then the Holy Spirit witnesses in us, and then the Holy Spirit can witness through us. Acts chapter 1, verse number 8. Says what, J.D.? Um, but ye shall. ye shall receive, receive power. Power. Amen. You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me. All right? So the Holy Spirit witnesses to us, then in us, then through us. Acts 5.32, and we are his witness of these things, and so is also the Holy Ghost. Whom God hath given to them that obey him. And again, the Holy Spirit comes in us, he indwells us, and he seals us into the day of redemption. I always like what Brother Jeff Coat uh, used to say. There's people that believe that they can be saved and lose it, and, and be saved and lose it, be saved and lose it. They just hope they die on the right day. Right? No. Once you're saved. That's it. This morning, I either want you to know that you're lost and that you can be saved. Or even if you have some doubts, I want you to know that there is a surety this morning of salvation through the atoning work of Christ, through the abiding witness of
of the Spirit and through the affirming word of the Father. The Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. The Son is the Word of God. How do I know that Jesus is the Word of God? Revelation 19 teaches us that there was a white horse, and he that sat upon it had a vesture uh, about him, and it had a name written on it that only he knew. Let me teach you something this morning. For so many years, I've been taught by different people that we don't know the true name of Jesus because only he knew the name that was written on the vesture. Well, the word knew is what? Past tense. You know how I know what the name of the Son of God is? Because it teaches us in Revelation 19 that his name is the Word of God. Amen? Amen. Go look it up for yourself. Revelation 19 teaches us that the name of Jesus, the name of him that sat on the horse is the word of God. Remember, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was just a God. No, the word was God. Psalms 119, I believe it's verse number 89. The Bible says, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. As I mentioned last night uh, to my dear friend that I love with all my heart, listen, Mary is not the mother of God. Mary had to be saved just like you and I. Mary went to Jesus and said, my Lord and my God. Well, where did Jesus come from? He's always been. He was given by the Father. Forever, O Lord, thy word, which is Jesus, God the Son. We have the affirmation of the word of the Father. Let's listen uh, to verses 10 through 13. He that believeth in the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him what? A liar. Because he believeth not on the record that God gave of his Son. And this is a record that God hath given to us eternal life. And this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things, therefore, uh, these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. Listen to what Jesus said. Verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say to you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life. And shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. I love that song. I found an old love letter that was written just for me. It was it told me how much I am loved sweetly and tenderly with a broken heart. I read each line of God's love for me. It was written by a nail-pierced hand at Calvary. Oh, how this old love letter spoke to my heart and soul. I was captured by every word as I watched his love unfold. With special care, he wrote it down for all eternity. It was written by a nail-pierced hand at Calvary. I found the old love letter. The page is stained with red. I am yours eternally is what the postscript said. I treasure my letter that he nailed upon that tree. My tears stain its pages every time I read. With special care, he wrote it down for all eternity. It was written by a nail-pierced hand at Calvary. Listen, if we do not believe the word, if you do not believe the word, then you, my friend, are calling God a liar. And I believe it's Deuteronomy that teaches us that God is not a man that he should lie. 
He that believeth on the Son of God hath a witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave us. Listen. Listen to me closely this morning. Salvation is not something that you feel. Because let me tell you something. Through the middle of the night, I did not feel saved. I'll just be honest with you. I was out in the cold all day yesterday. And my body greatly disliked it. And I suffered for it last night. Finally, when I got to sleep, three minutes later, I was waking up to come to church. Listen, I didn't feel saved then either. I remember... On July the 17th, 2009, this beautiful young lady walking down a long aisle. But before that, I remember her grand grandmother getting knocked over. But uh, that's another story, Anthony, if you're watching. Uh, but I remember as she walked down the aisle and we said out the I do's and I hope so's and this, that, and the other. And I made her sign the prenuptial agreement. If she leaves, I go with her. You know what? I don't always feel married. It's not a feeling that I have. I want us to see three last things this morning. Our salvation is not something that we're always going to feel. Our wedding, our, our marriage is not something that we're always going to feel. And there's so much yelling and screaming that goes on. And the yelling of the words, get out from underneath that bed. And then I yell, yes, dear. <laughs> she nudges me and elbows me in the middle of the night. You don't always feel married. Listen to this. Jesus is the source of our eternal life. Look at verse 11. This is the record that God has given to us eternal life. And this life is in his son. So not only is Jesus the source of eternal life, Jesus is our, the substance of our eternal life. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. We see that Jesus is the source of eternal life. He is the substance of eternal life. He is the surety of eternal life. These things I've ever written unto you that believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. How can I prove that I am married? Does my ring prove that I'm married? We talked about that several weeks ago. No, it doesn't prove that I'm married. It's just a symbol of my marriage. How can I prove that I'm married? Is it how I feel all the time? No. Listen, I've got a witness at the house that's got my name on it. That's got her name on it. And it's from the state of Maryland testifying that we gave ourselves to each other behold, uh, before God and before man that we were going to love each other till death do us part. My marriage certificate bears witness to all that I've been married. So this morning, this morning we have the atoning work of Christ. We've got the abiding witness of the Spirit. We have the affirming word of the Father. A couple questions for you this morning. Number one, do you belong to God? Have you accepted Him? Have you received the witness? For some reason, that are, that's the takeaways from last week. I don't know why the takeaways from this week didn't go in there. But anyway, are you a witness bearer for Him? The Holy Spirit has witnessed to you. You've accepted him. Now are you using the witness that is inside of you to show other people how to be saved? Lord, we don't know how this message is spoken to hearts this morning. I thank you that I know, that I know, that I know that I have salvation. That when I die, I'll be, I'll be straight. 
in the arms of the one who died for me. I pray, the Lord, if there's one that's listening to this message right now, they've never trusted you even right now from their heart, they would say as the publican in Luke 18, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Use this song, dear Lord, to minister to our hearts this morning. For it's in your precious name we pray. I know that my God's wondrous grace to me I may know, nor why a worthy Christ in love redeem me for his own. But I know what I believe in and I'm persuaded that he's able to keep So thankful that God has given us the word that we may be able to learn, that we may be able to know, and that we may be able to share his word. And um, we'll be praying for you this week. We love you. And if you're watching on Facebook Live and you're local, join us at 11 o'clock. And um, I never preach the same sermon the same way twice. And we don't record the second service. So come on out. We will be preaching the same service, uh, same sermon, but more than likely it'll be different. And uh, do we have any boys that want to sing? We have our church theme song. Yeah.